I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because I'm supposed to be working on brake pipes. Um, but as a little bit of a follow-on from uh, last time, uh, I need to improve on the reverse detent, which at the moment means I have to push down on this lever. Um, and the solution to that that I've thought of is by using a, a bicycle brake cable, which is a Bowden cable technically, and uh, a pull-up collar. Right, here's my sliding piece. I think that's about right. I just need to uh, have some kind of collar thing on it. Okay then, tube, large washer that I had to kind of drill out to make a bit bigger. But uh, are you getting the idea now? Oh, are you getting the idea? So <clears throat> here is my sliding collar. Here's my gear lever which I've actually taken off and I've welded on, can you see, this uh, small tab on the front which has a little hole in. And uh, in a moment I shall do another small tab to the sliding collar part. Can you get the idea? Probably about there I think. So we now have this system whereby if I lift it up like that okay so I've just um, <coughs> welded this piece on the front of the leave uh, clamp what's it called a plate that's it the plate that holds the gear lever the real gear lever into place and uh, not far to go now before I've got this thing working so I did um, a couple of revisions um, because I wasn't 100% happy uh, with especially this bracket here. Um, as you might remember, there was a couple of washers in there as a spacer. Um, and it was also very, very hard to get at due to the kind of huge size of the um, reversing light switch, which goes in that hole. Um, so what I've done is I cut the bracket and stepped it back so now there's no need for the um, the spacer in fact I'll just take it off and show you what it looks like I did do this before but the camera was playing up hold on to recap what I previously recorded um, yes I wasn't quite happy with that bracket because of two things if you remember these were forks rather than holes and um, of course as I've just mentioned um, this step back or step that that way wasn't there resulting in me needing to use some washers as a spacer so it now looks like that still got the asymmetric legs fork legs um, but it's also asymmetric that way with this step back as well and it does appear to me that the reason why the gearbox is asymmetric at that point indeed is you can see this little step here because of the reversing light switch which is quite huge uh, as well as that I cut away here and here just to make it easier to get at and especially on the reversing light switch side um, that makes life quite a bit easier still a bit of a fiddle to get in though to be honest but it's a lot easier than it than it was I've made a kind of rod for my own back with the uh, chassis member which I put in. It's not original Gil Gilbin. And uh, that certainly has made my life more difficult. But uh, hey ho. Even get a ring spanner at the spanner on it now. There we go. I think that's tight now. Okay, so that's the revised gearbox bracket. And the actual mounting plate I've also slimmed down with these kind of cutaways. Again, makes it just a little bit easier to fit. Hopefully it all still goes back together as before. 
and uh, because it's slimmed down it actually goes through there more easily than it did. There's still a requirement for some spacing washers just here which I had forgotten so I need to find those washers. I can't explain the requirement for having a different height just there but no matter. Oh, almost forgot to put the reversing light switch in which would have been a bit of a nuisance. So even now it's a bit of a fiddle to get in. Ah. Okay, well there's a heck of a lot more clearance. Can you see that? A heck of a lot more clearance between that bolt and this um, Reversing light switch now. Will it be enough to get a ring spanner on it? Not really, because of course the uh, the wire gets in the way. Just about do it. Okay. And I can also. Lighten up the other end and then we'll be back to at least where I was before I started these revisions. Okay so coming back onto reverse detent. So I um, originally put a tab on the edge of this uh, gib uh, lever retaining plate to hold one side of the Bowden cable but uh, then I realised of course don't actually need an extra plate because I've already got this plate so I just drilled a hole in it so I just need to feed this through Possibly this ought to be a tube rather than a hole. I believe you can get things called noodles for bicycle brake cables, which may ease this approach. But anyway, here we go. So I just need to bolt all that back together again then. Okay, that's worked then. Good. So my modified front plate hasn't upset the uh, mounting, which is good. Okay. And that means that I can tighten these up. Okay, so that's my that's my modification really. But the trick now will be to establish whether it actually works. Okay, so I'm now feeding the outer, which is uh, been trimmed, whereas the inner, as you can see. It's way too long. And then uh, I'm feed the inner through this little hole. I would put the lid on the tunnel, but um, because I've never actually tried it out fully yet, so I'm going to do it this way first. Okay. So that can go on there. There 
there's a small hole in there. Well, how does this look then? It's a little bit stiff, but I think perhaps it will be, if I root the cable here a bit, a bit better, it would, uh, it would help that. But in actual fact, yeah, I mean, yeah. This is one of the best things I've come up with. No one else has come up with this, not that I've seen anyway. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and reverse. Yay! So I'm just doing a bit of an experiment here. So this is, we, I can't demonstrate this, but I'm just feeling the amount of friction that there is between the inner and the outer of an actual brake cable and this is a piece of brake pipe my own homemade noodle and there's not a lot in it there really isn't so this is giving me an idea for an improvement a further improvement you might say well now so I've made my own noodle out of brake pipe just fed the tube through a hole I drilled there and this hole it's now a bigger hole because the pipe is stiff obviously this can't pull through it's not quite as easy on, on the fingers as I would have liked. It's not too bad. Alright then, so I've um, trimmed the end of the cable off because I'm now that confident that uh, it's going to work. I used an angle grinder to cut it by the way, which uh, <coughs> makes a very neat job. I'll show you the cut end. Yeah. Well, it's a neat job at this end anyway. Not as good as if it was welded. But anyway, um, yeah. So, well, how do we have it then? I did put a little a few drops of oil down the tube, and that does seem to have made a bit of difference actually. So, uh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, and reverse. And I don't think you can say fairer than that. So I just need to put the top on, the, to the tunnel top. And finally, I've actually lopped off the uh, little lug thing that I had down there. We have, and bear in mind there's no oil on this gearbox, one, two, three, four, five, six, and reverse. There we go. I could do with some kind of sleeving inside there. Stop the rattle. Hmm. I know. Yeah, that did it. Got the cable ties. Um, yeah, maybe it could do with a bigger thing here. But uh, I would describe that as mere details, really. Do tightening that up a little bit. 
Okay, gear linkage all tightened up. Two, three, four, five, six, and reverse. <laughs> yeah, not bad. And this sub project is definitely over.